even if you're not a soccer fan, you need to watch this video because what's going on in Europe and specifically in the English Premier League as it pertains to video assisted replay could be very, very important even if you are not a fan of the sport. And I will explain why. This morning, we saw yet again another VAR decision in the Premier League that cost a team a game. It's not the first time and I doubt it will be the last. And I know that basically everyone and their mother is making videos about how terrible VAR is and how it's ruining the game. But I think it's very, very important that we continue to talk about how bad VAR is for the game and specifically why. Let's discuss. Well, if you're an English Premier League fan, you already know what I'm going to talk about here. It's from the early kickoff this morning, Brighton against Liverpool. If you're not an English Premier League fan, let me run you down real fast. Video assisted replay is essentially what we understand as the review process. Uh, it's the exact same thing in theory. I'll explain why it's crucially different from what we have in, in American sport reviews. This morning, Liverpool got a goal called offside uh, because of this. I'm showing you the picture, and you will see that the offside is, well, you probably can't tell exactly where it is, and neither can I, and neither can anyone else on the planet. And that's really the issue. And this is not the only time that this has happened. If you are not a Premier League fan, if you're not a soccer fan, and this is the first you're hearing of it, well, then it also happened here and here and here and all of here this is not an isolated incident this is a big big problem and it has elicits elicited some big big statements from people saying the game is dead var is killing the game and all this kind of thing and if you have watched this channel for any length of time you know that i am not one to make sensationalized statements i don't like saying Oh, this is killing the game. The game is dead. I had a professor in college during the 2018 World Cup, and, and at the time I was saying every game was like the greatest game in the history of the World Cup. And my professor comes and tells me, he says, Griff, when you say everything is the greatest, nothing is the greatest. That has to mean something. <clears throat> and I truly believe that. So if VAR is killing the game every time that it makes a decision, well, then it's never killing the game. That that phrase has to mean something. That being said, VAR is very, very close to actually killing the game. And let me explain. I am a big believer in the spirit of the rule and of the game. And what was the offside rule designed to do? The offside rule was designed to make sure that the that the receiver of the pass was not going to get a significant advantage over the defender by being behind him. That's all it was meant for. Just don't get a significant advantage. When you look at these pictures of the goals that VAR has reversed, can you tell me where the significant advantage may have been? I mean, even if even if in the Liverpool one, Mo Salah's foot was offside. I mean, it's toenail was offside so maybe I don't think you can make an argument for that being a significant advantage but at least it's his foot but in some of these other pictures it's the guy's armpit or it's his hip I mean that's not even that's 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 not even close to being an advantage of any kind so to me VAR what it's doing specifically as it pertains to offside is totally against the spirit of the rule, the spirit of the game. And to me, that's the real issue. VAR, like any replay, both in Europe and in the US, <clears throat> was brought in specifically to correct clear and obvious errors. And in, in, we ha in any sport, we have our examples of, of clear and obvious errors, whether it's the fifth down in the 90s with CU football, uh, whether it's, I mean, the multitude of missed calls in the NFL, uh, whether it's in soccer, like the Hand of God by Diego Maradona, rest in peace, by the way, uh, to Maradona. You know, 
every sport has its examples of clear and obvious errors, and so replay review is supposed to stop that. And I do understand that. But if you look at any of the pictures that I showed you, would anyone really believe that that is a clear and obvious error? Is it, is, would anyone look at that and say, oh yeah, the ref missed that by a mile? Well, no, they wouldn't. But VAR does, and that goes completely against, again, the spirit of what that rule was supposed to mean and what it actually, the, the corrective measures that it's supposed to take. This is important for American audiences who don't watch soccer. And, and for, for any of you who do watch soccer but maybe don't watch American sports that much, this is important for you as well. In the U.S., specifically in the NFL and now in the XFL, we have a standard for replay reviews here in the U.S. And I am not saying that replay reviews in the U.S. are perfect by any stretch of the imagination. They are not. But they are not this bad. <clears throat> and the reason is because the standard in the U.S. is the clear and obvious error standard. And the reason that's important is because it means that if you see, uh, it, 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 essentially imagine a courtroom, right? In a courtroom, you have to have a preponderance of the evidence. That's the legal standard, or you have, or beyond a shadow of a doubt, the criminal standard. So if there's if there's any doubt that that the review could be wrong, if it's not clear and obvious that the call on the field was wrong, then the call on the field stands. When you look at this, specifically when it comes to offside, when the lines are the same, you know, they draw the lines for the defender's foot and, and the offensive player's foot, when they're the same, when it's the same line, how could that possibly be clear and obvious? How does that look like an obvious error to you? That's my point. And for American audiences, this is important because we, as people who watch American sports, we need to continue defending the clear and obvious error standard. Because if we don't, then this starts to happen. When you look at it and you say, well, you know, that maybe not, that maybe wasn't a clear and obvious error, but I could see how maybe it might have been. And so we're gonna change it. And that's pretty much what's happening with VAR right now. They're, essentially, what they're saying is, I can see how it may have been an error. And so let's change it. Instead of actually going in the affirmative and saying it was an error and we're going to change it. I mentioned the XFL earlier because I think the XFL has the best implementation of this rule. If you remember, and I actually did a video about this uh, during the first XFL review, uh, the, first, the first ever XFL review, I, I did a video and I mentioned that because, and actually cricket does this, for those of you who uh, maybe don't watch American sports but you do watch cricket, cricket does the same thing. You can listen to the dialogue between the referee and the uh, video official, and you can hear what they're saying to each other. And what that does is the added, the added level of, of transparency gives more accountability to the actual review process that's going on. And as a result, the referees are far less likely to make a, I wouldn't say a controversial decision, but make a decision without the clear and obvious error because we can hear what they're doing. And so just by virtue of that, they are forced to explain to the TV audience exactly what they're doing and why. And as a result, even if the decision is controversial, because we know how they arrived at the decision, it actually makes a lot more sense to us as TV viewers. Again, both the XFL and Cricket do this. So I think there are two solutions for VAR as it stands right now in European soccer and specifically in the Premier League. Solution number one is, okay, I should say there are three. Solution number one is get rid of it. Just totally scrap it. I'm not necessarily in favor of that one and I'll explain. Solution number two is to keep the rules the way that they are, but to add in the microphones on the referees and the video officials, like I described in the XFL and in cricket, to again, give that added level of accountability to the TV audience so that everyone knows how they arrived at the decision. I don't think that's necessarily a bad call, 
but I don't think it's the preferred option. The preferred option for me is solution number three. We have to clarify the language. And this goes for the Premier League, for European soccer, and for every single league in the world of any sport that uses any kind of video review. The language needs to be extremely precise. The language has to be clear and obvious error with a preponderance of the evidence or however it is that you want to state that but you have you have to be absolutely certain that anyone with eyes looking at this play will say that's a missed call and so you can look at obvious obvious errors and say that's what review is there to stop and i agree with that but when you look at these offside calls these are not obvious errors that anyone with a brain would see. They're extremely debated. And because of that, it's not in the spirit of the game to overturn them. I keep saying, I keep using this phrase, the spirit of the game, because to me, this is this is still sport, right? I mean, we, we can't miss the forest for the trees here because what's going on in VAR is we're saying, well, maybe there's a slight advantage. I mean, we're, we're talking a minute advantage so small that it probably doesn't exist to this guy being offside or, or whatever the case may be. And so as a result, it goes against sport if we were to make this call. And to me, that's just ridiculous because that's not when, when the game was invented in the 18th, the 17th century, uh, in the case of soccer, or whenever the game was invented, they did not intend for this to happen. And to me, that's that's very important. And so the, the standard has to be clear and obvious error by the referees on the field. And then we can add in the microphones on the referees and the VAR officials so that we can hear what they're talking about to give that added accountability to the television audience. This is very, very important to discuss every time we see it, even though, you know, for, for, for my part, there are people on YouTube or on television who are much bigger than I, have a much larger reach than I do talking about this. It's, it's still important for me to make this because everybody, every single person who watches professional sports, American or European, whether they watch soccer or don't, it's very, very important for everybody to know exactly what's going on because if we lose control then we end up in a situation like currently exists in the Premier League where every time the ball hits the back of the net, immediately the fans' first first thought is, is this coming back? Is there going to be a review? And when you see that purple VAR screen on, on the uh, Jumbotron at the stadium, you know, yep, we're going to be here for 10 minutes and the decision, it's basically random at this point. You know, it, it's, <laughs> I mean... That is, that is the issue, and this is why everybody should be concerned about this, because as American fans, we felt that as well. We felt the exact same thing. I mean, MLB's, uh, Major League Baseball's rollout of their review system was, was by no means smooth, and it had many of the same issues that we see here that have to be ironed out. I mean, the NFL has drawn significant criticism for their review process in the past. You know, I mean... This is not unique to the Premier League. So whether you are a soccer fan or not, we need to recognize that what's going on is bad for the game. And for those of you who aren't soccer fans, I hope that you've made it to the end of this video so that you also can can understand why our implementation of the clear and obvious error standard is so important and needs to be upheld. We as fans have the ability to change things like this. Remember, Sports, television broadcasters, they are beholden to us as fans. They don't do this for their health. They do this to make money from us to watch the game. So we have a say. And as fans, the more and more the word gets out about how bad VAR is, how bad the implementation is right now in the Premier League and, in, and across Europe in general, the more that word gets out, the more likely it becomes that they will change it. Just remember that. So, to sum everything up, whether you watch soccer or not, what's going on right now in the Premier League is a disgrace. It could start truly killing the game if this were to continue. And we should call it out every single time it happens, whenever it happens. And I hope that all of us will continue to do that. 
and I hope that all of us will continue to watch soccer so we see that this stuff is happening. And uh, I hope that all of us will continue to watch all of my content here on GA Sports. I'll work, on, I'll work on my segues in the future. I promise. I promise. But if you did make it to the end of this video, thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think. If you think I have the bad, uh, a wrong read of this situation, if there's something I missed, um, please let me know. We have great discussions in the comments here. I take a lot of pride in that. So thank you so much. Subscribe here to GA Sports. We appreciate you. Listen.